Does sunscreen cause hair loss? I have been seeing a lot of conversation about this topic lately among the general public and among dermatologists. It is actually a concerning association that is gaining momentum. So it's time we address everything we know about it right now in this video. And at the end, I'm giving you the best sunscreen options that just may avoid this problematic association. All of those are linked in the description. So here is what we know so far about sunscreen and hair loss. There is a certain hair loss condition called frontal fibrosing alopecia, or FFA for short, which is increasing over time. Dermatologists are seeing way more cases of this in our exam rooms, and it is alarming. The worst thing about FFA is that we don't know what causes it or why we are seeing so much more over time. However, we are suspicious that it is being caused by an environmental trigger, meaning an external cause is leading to the hair loss. But what is the trigger? We don't know, except for some people are blaming sunscreens. So here's a little bit about FFA. This condition was first reported in 1994. It is a form of scarring and progressive hair loss that is seen at the frontal and temporal hairline and the eyebrows. Cosmetic ingredients are suspected to be the cause, and in particular, it's the UV blockers and sunscreens that are most concerning as these began to be added to cosmetics in the late 1980s. Further supporting this theory are numerous observational studies which have shown a link between people who frequently use sunscreens and those who develop FFA. There are actually four studies in particular that found this. Study number one questioned 200 women about sunscreen use. They found that there was an increased risk for FFA when sunscreen use was reported at least twice per week. Study number two looked at men only and found an increased frequency of FFA in patients who reported use of sunscreen or sunscreen containing moisturizers. And study number three was the largest study looking at more than 300 patients and found an increased FFA frequency in patients using sunscreens. And lastly, study number four looked at women only comparing those with FFA to those without, and also found an increased FFA frequency in patients using sunscreens. There has also been a singular case report of a lady with FFA in a classic pattern where she also had a striking linear patch of hair loss along her central part. This was an area where she regularly applied sunscreen for many years. And a case report has shown hair regrowth in a woman with FFA who discontinued use of sunscreen along the hairline. Now, let me say, although this association is interesting and I'll agree, quite alarming, you need to understand that these first four studies are survey-based retrospective studies. This particular type of study design is not the best for determining actual cause. Rather, they just determine associations. Further, this study type is flawed with recall bias, which means people can selectively remember or forget certain pieces of information based on their personal outcomes. The best way to determine causation between sunscreen and FFA is to do a double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled trial. And that just is not practical because studies like that can take many years and require strict control of numerous factors. This particular link between FFA and sunscreen use would take many years, if not a lifetime, to develop in a person. So you can see that conducting a study over that lengthy amount of time is not always feasible. Nailing down a causation is very difficult and oftentimes we are left only with retrospective studies yielding loose associations as we have here. Another problem from these previous four studies is that we don't know what kind of sunscreen these participants were using. Were they organic or inorganic? Or what ingredients in particular might be causing this association? However, there have been other recent studies that also suggest sunscreens may be the trigger for FFA because titanium dioxide was found in the hair shafts of some of these people with FFA. That is kind of alarming. So let's look a bit more in depth at these studies. There are three. Study number one looked at 16 women with FFA and found titanium dioxide in hair shafts of all of them. 
They also tested three patients without FFA and found titanium dioxide in their hair shafts as well. They looked at one male who used no cosmetic products or sunscreens or hair dyes and did not find titanium dioxide in his hair shafts. The hypothesis here is that titanium dioxide, which is a foreign material and not supposed to be in the hair shaft, is causing chronic inflammation and eventual hair shedding. Study number two showed the presence of titanium dioxide in the hair shafts of a patient with biopsy-proven FFA. This patient stated she applied sunscreen with nanoparticles of titanium dioxide on a daily basis to the face over the last 10 years. Not only was titanium dioxide found, but also silica, sulfur, chlorine, and calcium were detected in these hair shafts as well, though to a lesser degree. And study number three looked at 20 patients with FFA and compared their hair shafts to 40 patients without FFA. They found that the patients with hair loss had 8.6 times the amount of titanium dioxide on their hair shafts compared to the controls without FFA. Titanium dioxide is not only in sunscreens, but it is also in cosmetics like foundations to add pigment, and it serves as a thickener in some hair care products. Titanium dioxide is photocatalytic, which means that when it's exposed to UV light, it may cause free radical formation, tissue damage, and inflammation. Some titanium dioxide particles can be coated, and that may alter its action, but this is still controversial. Also, many products contain some percentage of nanoparticles, and it is this particle size that possibly penetrates the skin and the hair shafts, although this process needs more clarification. Remember that even non-nano sunscreens still have nanoparticles. The non-nano designation on labels is not highly regulated and most likely just means that the majority of the product is non-nano, but not 100% free. Even sunscreens for babies when evaluated by independent companies have been found to have nanoparticles of sunscreen filters in them. This is a major area that needs more focus and transparency so that we, the consumers, can make more informed decisions and not be misled by tricky product labeling. Now, zinc oxide, on the other hand, is less photocatalytic, so it's theorized that zinc oxide is less of a problem when it comes to FFA. Therefore, you may want to choose zinc oxide only based sunscreens. Again, I share my top picks at the end of this video and they are linked in the description. So what do we do with this association? We take it for what it is worth. It is worth having an open mind about this and staying up to date as more information and studies come out on this topic. In my opinion, dermatologists should use these study results to tailor our sunscreen advice to each individual's unique circumstances. Sunscreen use is not a one-size-fits-all approach. If you are at a high risk for skin cancer, like you have light skin color, a previous history of skin cancer, a family history of skin cancer, you have certain lifestyle choices that put you at higher risk, or maybe you work outdoors, then your risk for developing skin cancer from not using sunscreen is much higher than your risk of getting FFA from using sunscreen. So to that group of people, I recommend using sunscreen. Or you can always opt for hats and sun protective clothing and seeking shade during peak sunlight hours. However, if you are at a very low risk of UV-induced skin cancer, perhaps you will weigh this association more heavily in your decision of when and how to use sunscreen. And remember, it is not just sunscreen. It's moisturizers, makeup, and hair products that contain these problematic nano-sized ingredients as well. So you will need to reevaluate all of your topicals, not just sunscreens. And my further opinion is that if you suffer from FFA, you might consider discontinuing use of topical products on the face and opt for alternative sun protective measures instead, again, like sun protective clothing, hats, and seeking shade during peak hours of sunlight. So now let's talk about some practical sunscreen recommendations based on these findings. There are plenty of options of sunscreens that contain zinc oxide only as the UV filter, no titanium dioxide at all. 
And even if titanium dioxide is not listed in the active ingredients, it may still be added to tint the sunscreen, so check the entire ingredients label first. Here are some options of sunscreen with zinc oxide only and absolutely no titanium dioxide in the product. All of these are linked in the description. Aven Solaire UV Mineral Tinted Sunscreen. This has zinc oxide as the UV filter and iron oxides as the tinted protection from visible light. Coats Sunscreen. This one also only zinc oxide. It is tinted with iron oxides, not titanium dioxide, and this one feels so nice on the skin. It finishes with a powdery matte finish. My Shell Tinted Sun Shield is similar to the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, but this one comes at a better price point, except it has less shade options. The Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint might be a good choice, although it says it may contain titanium dioxide as a tint, but I'm not sure if it does or not, so you can try that one as well if you need a closer color match to your skin. Elta MD UV Glow. I love this one. This also contains niacinamide and it finishes with a very luminous look on the face. This one is tinted with iron oxides only. Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection. This is another amazing product, a holy grail for sunscreen use, and this one also uses iron oxides to give it a tint. And last, Suntegrity Skincare Mineral Sunstick, the tinted version. This is a very unique product because you really don't find many tinted sunscreen sticks, and this one does not contain titanium dioxide. So those are my top picks. I'm not saying don't use sunscreens with titanium dioxide. I will still continue to use these products because I do not think they will cause a problem in everyone. After all, if this was the case, you would see a huge proportion of balding dermatologists or dermatologists with FFA, and that just isn't the case so far. But I am giving you these options if you are interested in avoiding titanium dioxide sunscreens. Maybe in the future we will find out it's something in addition to or different than titanium dioxide, but for now we have to go off of the best information that we have and make the most calculated decisions. So, in summary, I want to be clear, all of this evidence so far is purely association, which does not prove causation between FFA and sunscreen. However, mounting association is still concerning and worth paying attention to. This should inspire more in-depth scientific studies. I still believe in using sunscreens, but I do think we should be more thoughtful about how and when we use them and maybe choose specific formulations that best address our concerns. And as always, I advocate for more transparency in the sunscreen formulation and packaging industry because we deserve to know precisely what is in the products that we are putting on our skin and the skin of our children. So let me know in the comments below what you think of these studies and if this will affect your choice in sunscreens. Thanks for watching and make sure you are subscribed to my channel and I'll see you next time.